Let's continue on with our introduction to Copernicus by looking at how we can use custom geometry in our copnets. So as always, the project file for this will be available on Patreon. So grab that if you are interested in that. And we will continue to build upon this as time goes on in the series. Now I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this tile UVs because I don't really want that. And let's take a look at how we can use the custom geometry for this actual object. So there's two different ways that we can do this and depending on your workflow may determine which one you're looking to use. Now we're going to, let's, let's start off with how we can just do this if you're in, no matter what context you're in. And then we'll take a look at a Solaris kind of specific um, way of working. So with this preview material, we have this geo option that we have set here. Notice we don't have a, if I set this, select this actually, in this geometry, we don't have a custom geometry option. We just need to wire something into this in order to have this be the custom geometry. Now, we in order to do that, we have to drop down a SOP import and we can wire this into our geo. And I can jump inside here and now I have access to SOP so I can create whatever I want. In this case, I'm just going to drop down a rubber toy just to use this as a demonstration. So I'm going to uncheck that shader option because it doesn't really matter. And then I can jump out of here and I can preview our material. And now you can already see that we have our rubber toy being used as our custom geometry. And now everything that we do inside of here, let's say we wanted to make a copy of this and set this to RGB and set that as our base color. You know, everything's going to update based upon whatever geometry that we have in here. If I wanted to change this to like a pig head, I can certainly do that. And we should see, okay, we should see that this updates. We may have to, again, break our connection here and just wire that in. That is a bug that I've noticed that we will maybe sometimes have to do. Now, we can use this as the SOP import, or we can also just direct this to a custom SOP path if we wanted to. So we could do the same thing, create this in a you know, in the normal geo context or in a stock creator, whatever you want to do. And then we can point that to this, that path. You just check that and just point it to whatever path we want. Whatever you want to do, whichever one works best for you is what I would say to, to do. The other option is to use Solaris and Karma to do this. So I'm going to drop down, well, I'm going to drop down a whole setup here. So I have a recipe set up that's just going to drop down a basic scene for me. If you want to learn more about these, I have a video on how recipes work inside of Houdini 20.5 as they are also new. But this just gives me a basic scene to work with. And I can come in here and I can drop down that same rubber toy. And then I can come up to our material library here. I can jump inside here and come to this Karma material. And I can drop down an image, Material X image texture. And for this, I can wire this into our base color. I'll also make a second one and wire this into our displacement. For this one, I'm going to make this a float because that's what displacements are. And in here, I can start to type something in this file name. Now, I've covered this in our quick material the new quick labs, quick material, or not labs, but the quick surface material node. This sets things up for you. If you set or create here, you can uh, click this node and it will create a cop net for you. And uh, it will automatically set up the, the path. But if you don't want to do that and you want to have access to all of the karma nodes and be able to do you know extra things inside of here, then you can do it through these Material X image nodes. And the way that we're going to reference that cop node is just do op colon backslash, and then we have to point to that node. So we'll do stage, cop net one, and then actually before I do this, I'm going to jump back out. I'm going to come to this cop net, and I would drop down a null, and I would wire then our, our base color, with this was going to act as our base color and this will act as our height. 
And with this, I can, well, actually, I'll only wire in one, I should say. We'll do base color here. And then I'll do another one of these, and we'll call this one height. And I'll wire this into that input there. Now if I go ahead and jump back to our material library, I can come to this image and in this cop net, I can then point to, we have our base color. And I can select this, come down to our image here. I can copy that same thing. And then instead of base color, we'll use height. Or height, there we go. And I can assign this. So with our Karma material, I can drag that in there and then just drop our stop create in here and come to our render settings. And we have this being displaced quite heavily because our Karma material is displacing it very, very heavily. So I'll drop that down to like 0.1. And it looks like we've disappeared. It's not liking what we've got set up. Let's go ahead and render to Karma XP and we'll see if that pops up. So it does. So let's pin our camera and we can look at our geometry here. And you see that we have our displacement going on our object here, which is super, super cool. So now we can, if we want to work inside of Karma, we can pin this. Or if we don't, if we want to have access to working inside of Karma, we can pin that. And we can just come back in to here. Now, obviously this is giving us issues with our stop create for some reason. It's not really liking what we have, um, but we can we can use this inside of the cop net as well. So if I just have this set there, it's finally showing up. Now we have our object being shown and I can change this. I could set this to maybe we set this back to a mono and then we use a ramp, an RGB ramp. And we could set this to I don't know, whatever we want. Uh, maybe this one or a do a twilight. And we can play around with, you know, the different settings here. And this is just a, a preview of our material. So it's obviously not going to be as high res, we can just jump into XPU. And then we can start to you know, play around with the different settings here to get kind of whatever we wanted and change our noise amplitude. And if we wanted to tile this more, you know, we can, we can do so through there. Now I would recommend not uh, necessarily doing it this way unless you needed to, to use Karma XPU to preview this. Uh, but I would, I would probably honestly do that as a, a last step. I would just keep this unpinned and then come back and just use this preview material with a SOP import in here. And again, like I said, we can come in here and we can just point this to our SOP create and come in and just use the same geometry if we would like. Again, we may need to just detach that and reattach it to get this to update, but we can get our same object in here that way. Uh, and that's honestly what I would recommend as far as what you're doing. And you can honestly even plug all these into a subnet. If you want to create a bunch of different materials, we can do this all inside of a subnet and just do things that way. It works uh, a little bit better for organization purposes if you want to do it that way. But anyways, that is how you can use custom geometry inside of COPS to you know, preview your materials on your actual objects and get an idea of what they're actually gonna look like in your, your final scene. So hopefully this has helped you out. We're gonna be covering more of COPS and what we can do with this and how we can access different things and uh, do a whole bunch of different things inside of COPS. I'm super excited to, to dive in and you know, see what all we can learn and do with, with COPS. So, Hopefully this has helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that cover all of the new stuff inside of Houdini. We'll continue to build on that and take a look at all the new features. There are a bunch of new features inside 20.5, so check those out if you're interested. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.